Hey, Jory, how's it going? Hi, very well. What about you? Doing very well, thank you. Um, can you please uh, introduce yourself, uh, let people know um, uh, a little bit more about your project, and then feel free to hop into uh, your presentation. Hi, so this is Holly, co-founder of Ethic Hub, which is, um, and I, will, I like to call it more like an ecosystem for smallholder farmers in developing economies. Our mission is to help them improve the living standard and how we do that. First, uh, we started with lending. So you can lend these smallholder farmers uh, die and earn 8% super secure because there is a compensation system made of our token, the ethics. So if you are more kind of Rayen crypto guy, you buy ethics and stake on behalf of the farmers. So they have collateral, so more risk averse people lend them that money for 8% yield, which it used to be like super low risk, but now that um, um, all the super high yielding solutions are failing, seems to be that it's not that bad idea to bet on um, real world sustainable yields. Um, our yields nowadays, I think, are super competitive even in crypto. And um, moreover that, we also help them afterwards sell their crops. So you can buy our farmer's coffee. Uh, you have tried, if you are attending some crypto events, you, I'm pretty sure you have tried it, Ethic Hub Coffee okay? because we normally sponsor crypto events with coffee. And if you didn't, in Barcelona, there will be our coffee also. And finally, we are working on tokenizing their um, carbon credits. So they have a new revenue stream um, uh, together with Ray Network, D Climate, and some other guys in the region, uh, ReFi space. And basically, this is how, what we do. We are a DeFi protocol much before DeFi was a concept. No, we, we started in June 2018. We were in Minet, Ethereum. Then we moved to Gnosis Chain in 2019, 20, I don't remember. Um, and now we are moving to Celo because in Celo is where all this RIFA movement is, is growing as the community more about this um, purpose driven DeFi. And basically, that's it. What do you want me more to, to do to tell Penguin? Um, no, I think that's a great. Intro, thank you very much. Um, do you have uh, any slides or presentation? Sure. Okay. Let me, let me, sorry, it's charging. I'm not seeing the screen yet. Yeah, it's it's charging. Sorry for that. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. So how how long do you want me to do the presentation? Uh, so you have uh, twenty three minutes remaining. Mm -hmm. Perfect. That's a long time. We can talk so many things in that time. Um, so I will start with the why behind Ethic Hub, no? And it's uh, basically because uh, uh, when uh, what what is the biggest opportunity for crypto? Uh, rethinking the financial system, right? 
So what is the biggest problem with the traditional financial system? That it less excluded almost a quarter of the world population, which most of them are smallholder farmers in developing economies, the so-called unbank, that in the case of smallholder farmers, uh, they are trapped in a poverty cycle despite having a profitable activity, which is uh, very, very hard, no? because you normally think of, on poor people of these uh, homeless in the cities, no? but but these people have uh, worked very hard, they have a plot of land and they have a profitable activity, but they are trapped in this poverty cycle because they cannot access affordable capital to invest into improving their productivity and in order to access a better markets, etc. And why they remain in banquet? Basically because they don't have um, data to provide a great scoring. Uh, so most of the crypto solutions that are working on non collateralized loans don't work for them because they rely on, on data. And also their plot of land is not like something they can give as a collateral to anyone in the world on that collateral. Um, so all this tokenization of, of uh, real estate doesn't work also for them. So we had to invent something we call crowd collateral, which, which may basically means you buy our token ethics and stake on their behalf in, in the crypto platform, in the DAP. So other people can lend them money for this 8% yield, right? We, we have intermediated more than 2 million in microloans with less than 1% default, which was 100% compensated. And how we uh, uh, do this? We have basically four stakeholders. The low risk, low return, providing stable coins for loans to the loan originators who were uh, uh, onboard by the auditors who provide the the due diligence and also stake ethics on behalf of these loan originators. And finally, we have ethics stakers who also um, fulfill the bout of collateral of the loan originator required for the lenders uh, to lend to the loan originators. So basically, there is two, two pool system. The lending pool are made of stable coins. Uh, where loan originator can access the, the the liquidity when they have collateral, and the compensation system, which is a, a staking pool where you buy ethics and stake on their behalf, and if there is a default or whatever other reason there is not enough DAI for to cover for the lender's fixed uh, yield, eight percent, and some ethics are sold to to pay for the difference, same way that if everything works properly, 4% of each loan goes to buy back ethics from the market and further capitalize the compensation system. So creating a sustainable demand for the ethics. So at the end, the goal is to create this incentive loop, which we consider the key for our project. No? That is that a trustworthy platform attract investors, the more lending, the more demand for the ethics, the more demand for the ethics, the more value in the compensation system. So, so more trustworthy is the platform, so more people is willing to lend. And um, basically, this is how we designed the tokenomics of the ethics. It's like very original ones because 50% of it was directly allocated to the compensation system because at the end, the main goal of ethics is to create collateral for the farmers. And 25% is like inflation, no? like DAO control ethics to incentivize behaviors. For now, this is being used to incentivize people to buy ethics and stake in the compensation system. And this will be delivered to the market during 16 years. 
after 16 years, we consider we, we should have arrived to us uh, um, our um, maximum uh, market share and, and we should be able to survive things on fees, you know, the system itself. And I think with this, uh, it's more or less clear how Ethicam works. And this is an original thing because we have an equity company behind Ethicam, um, which is a very difficult thing to manage. But if done properly, I think this is very valuable to have a, a, an equity company behind a DAO. Because, for example, when, uh, <clears throat> when you want the Inter-American Bank for Development as our first uh, um, institutional investor to lend to the farmers. They they won't buy, die and lend out in a smart contract. What they do is lend to this equity company and we lend out again to the uh, lending protocol. So we provide value to the ethics DAO by bringing in capital to the DAO, to the lending protocol. We are also acting as a first auditor in the system. And, and we are also, as I was saying at the beginning, selling uh, their farmers uh, coffee for now, in the future, other crops, always uh, agroforestry uh, crops. And I wanted to show the web page in real time so you understand better. So this is ethics.ethichub.com and if you come here you can see the ethics price on real time the circulating supply etc you can um, buy bonds this is trust minimized bonds uh, because uh, basically you want to invest 100 dai for three months this is six percent api apy and is five ethics per per die collateralize. Uh, so if, it, if your bond is not paid on time with capital plus interest, you, you get the ethics automatically. This is an NFT and in the future will be, uh, it ha will have some liquidity in, in NFT lending platforms. And I think this is that kind of new DeFi primitive uh, these tokenized yield bonds, it trust minimized because they are collateralized. And this is the ethics uh, part of it. So you can stake ethics on behalf of a, a, a specific loan originator. So you have higher yield because you are high, taking higher risk, or you have uh, just and and this is long term stake it at least 12 months. And here is the regular ethics staking. This is just a, um, a unlock period of 10 days, a cooldown. And this is a, when providing liquidity in any, in any swap to the ethics ether pair, you, you get 62% yield right now, plus the fees for sure in the, in the uh, Uniswap pool. And um, you can see in real time what is the total value lock stake in the compensation system plus the outstanding debt of all loans uh, pending of return uh, given to the farmers. So uh, today we are nine, seven times, almost 10 times collateralized. Mm -hmm. And this is the lowest because for sure the crypto market also took down the ethics because at the end the price is mainly uh, created on Uniswap against Ether. So when Ether falls down, also the takes down some uh, half of it to the ethics. And this is mainly Ethic Hub, which is hard to fully understand because there's a lot of things uh, involving in Ethic Hub. Uh, now, 
uh, I wanted just to end up with um, like um, pitching about with this refi movement no, that is being created. If you are not all of you very aware of, of that, this is uh, re regenerative finance, which is basically leveraging on crypto and DeFi to solve the most important problems in the world, starting with climate crisis, but also social problems like we are solving. And um, this is starting to have some traction. And I think this is the key that not only crypto can survive crypto winter, but even grow during crypto winter because if you are lending out to the real world, um, there is a, always need for capital in the real world. And it's also the way that regulators and institutions alike are supported with, with crypto because they see um, problems being solved with this technology and not like until now that it was just creating protocols about creating more complex financial derivatives which is super cool but at the end are not um, as far as they don't provide value to the real world is not uh, a sustainable growth it was only about more people coming in because of the yields and when the yields at some point decrease because people stop liking to have more and more leverage um, it's like uh, a castle made of, of sand that collapses uh, unless if we have um, a real demand for DeFi no? uh, that we can build in the real world. I had a quick question um, about uh, farmers and the typical kind of loan size. Uh, obviously, uh, if we talk about uh, first world countries, you know, things are very expensive. People can spend $10,000 on, on a month on rent and food and stuff like that. But uh, what's kind of the typical loan size that, that you're looking at for some of these farmers and what kind of rates do, do they get that that's, you know, uh, supporting them for, for these uh, local efforts? So, um, we, at the beginning, we were working directly with the farmers, but it was not very scalable. So we um, joined them together in Mexico with, in a cooperative. And now we are looking for more cooperatives or traders working with the farmers or um, fertilizer distributors selling fertilizer to the farmers. So they want uh, credit to sell on credit, be able to sell more on credit to them. And, um, so the loan size to these aggregators are not that small, it's 5K, 10K, 20K, but at the end, the, the loan for the specific farmer is an average of 1,000 up to $4,000 per year. And uh, for the loan originator, the cost is like, uh, 16% and going down uh, year after year up to 10%, something like that. You have to consider that uh, in developing economies, the access to capital is super expensive. This is one of the biggest problem of the traditional financial system, this misallocation of capital worldwide, that in developing economies, capital is abundant and, and cheap and in developing economies is scarce and expensive. So our farmers are used to pay five to 10% monthly interest rates. So over 100% yields, uh, interest rates are, are what they are used to. Uh, so our solution is like a huge increase, uh, improve from what they have today. Well, that's great. Yeah, I think, uh... One of the things that uh, isn't very well uh, kind of understood is when we talk about the ability to do what we want, and uh, everything costs money. You know, even even the, the choice of opinion uh, costs money, and to make kind of impact, uh, we can we can do things. But even like giving up your parking spot 
for a community garden has got uh, you know time and impact and, and the cost of making a garden. But uh, I think making it more affordable to uh, people that otherwise wouldn't have the opportunity and to build the connections, it sounds like that's another one of the huge opportunities that you provide is that one farmer might not have the power to uh, have the purchasing power to get enough grain or something at, at a discounted rate. But by uh, joining a collective and by getting access to these tools, collectively, they're able to do a lot more, uh, even for the individual members. Uh, has that kind of spawned uh, organically, or, or have you guys had to help uh, get farmers together for these collectives? Um, at the end, um, they uh, are like local groups of 10, 20, 50 people in one community. And some uh, many communities around an area uh, form a cooperative, you know, uh, that, uh, which have a base in, in a local city, in the local city. You know? Uh, so it's log logistically uh, possible to work with all of them more or less uh, at the same time. Does it make sense for you? Yeah. Um, and how how long have you been into to DeFi? I know that you said that you were actually like one of the you guys were DeFi before DeFi was uh, <laughs> DeFi. How long have you been into? Uh, technology and uh, crypto so which is funny i am not that og no i am from 2000 in 2016 i i, I decided i wanted to start something and i did an innovation degree with that, where i met blockchain technology and i fell in love with that and i say okay i want to leverage on this to change the world for better but our co-founder diego was trying to build um um lending uh, on bitcoin in 2012 <laughs> for his master uh so i think he was maybe the earliest in the world trying to do DeFi. <laughs> awesome that's so, that's so cool you know i think having this global idea and, and sharing this information uh at, with everyone is so important uh, I always try and make sure that uh, we have different language supports for all the sites that I build. Can you talk a little bit about some of the challenges about uh, you know, being in a very technical space without having some of the language supports that, uh, you know, would everything being in English, you know, is there a great deal of uh, yeah. support for Spanish resources? Yeah. Uh, so, um, the main challenges for me, it's more about uh, this, uh, we are trying to, to blend together crypto and impact, and it was like oil and water. Uh, it was very hard to, to blend together these two things. Um, and in 2000 at the beginning it was like okay the crypto is about doing 100x and people didn't want to hear much about this impact yes in theory but not in practical terms and in the impact space where which is our our ecosystem they basically don't trust crypto at all this is the most conservative people in the world and they consider this to be a scammy thing and everything. everything. So it, it was very hard to work in this intersection, but I think it's like a huge opportunity. And now finally, this is like starting to happen with, with this refi movement with what I was speaking before. And I think that's the most important um, challenge for we all, that is to understand that Technology is just technology, it's a neutral thing. Uh, you can use technology for good and for bad, no? I always say uh, internet was used to, to build a, a child pornography web page and also to build Wikipedia, no? 
so it is not that technology is good or bad itself, but how we use the, it to change the world. And, and in crypto, we were very um, like not aware of this, no? and we were like building these financial derivatives with little sense instead of trying to understand what were the problems in the real world and how to leverage on this for the real world problems. And, and I think that's the, the biggest challenge of all that, that we uh, on board, we commit in a purpose driven way to, to leverage this uh, to change the world for better. Well, thank you so much, Hori. Uh, can you please remind people of uh, where they can continue this conversation and where to best reach uh, you and the community? So basically, the easiest is our webpage, no? ethichub.com. Uh, we are very active on, on Telegram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook, uh, even a bit of Instagram. So basically, you can connect with us almost everywhere. We now have a Discord channel also, which is just starting. So you can come by there. And uh, Ethic Hub DAO is yet not operational. Uh, this is like our main goal for this year. So you are people who like what we are doing. You are invited to to join our discord and and help us with building this this dao and and you set the terms for it because it will be like the starting point for for the dao well, excellent thank you so much